in this final video, um, Leslie's back, Martin's mum, remember Martin is my boyfriend, and she's just going to go through some past exam questions with you. Obviously, if you're not happy with functions, you need to go back and watch the other videos. So we have separate videos on basic functions, composite functions, and self-inverse functions. So have a look at those before you get started. Okay, so let's look at some exam, exam questions. First question is quite straightforward. This is your function f. It's telling you you're going to start with the value x and out the other end, you'll have the value of x take away 4. So if you're going to put the number 5 in, you're going to start with 5, you're going to take away 4, so the answer you're going to get out is the number 1. That's all there is to it. Second part, part B, is telling you to put 3 in. So you're going to put 3 into your machine. Your machine tells you to take away 4. 3 take away 4 is negative 1. So that's the number you're going to get out. Question 2, same sort of question, just a little bit harder, because instead of having just the one operation to do, this time you've got quite a few. So if you look at what you're doing, you're starting with a number, a letter x. You're doing a function called g. Now that's telling you to square first, then multiply by 2, then take away 10. So I'm going to start with 2. I'm going to square it first to give me 4. I'm going to multiply by 2 to give me 8. And then I'm going to take away 10 to give me the answer, negative 2. And that's what your answer will be. Second part of the question, this time you're going to put negative 2 into the function. So you're going to get, have negative 2. And the first thing you're going to do is to square it. Now, negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 gives you out the answer 4. So we should be doing the same thing again. We've got 4, you're going to multiply it by 2, which gives you 8. You're going to take away 10, which again gives you negative 2. So you've got a negative 2 as an answer to both parts of the question. You do have to be careful with squaring negative numbers. Just watch your plus and minus signs. Right, the last part of the question is saying, OK, I'm not telling you what number I'm going putting in. I'm telling you the number you're going to get out. So g of x from up here, you can see that g of x is 2x squared minus 10. So it's saying to you, once you've put your value in, done the function g, then the answer you've got out is 8. So now you've got to undo the whole function, which effectively is solving an equation. So we have 2x squared minus 10 equals 8. Move the minus 10 over to the other side. So 2x squared is 18. Divide by the 2, x squared is 9. OK, now think about it. Which number can you square to get 9? Well, you can square 3, but you can also square negative 3. So this time, there are two separate answers. Your answer might be 3, or it might be negative 3. So there's two answers to go into the answer slot. OK, so skipping on to number 4. Um, the first two parts are fairly straightforward. They're usually straightforward to start off with, just to get you happy with what the function is doing. So again, this function, it's, they're calling it f, and it's saying, take a number, square it, and then take away 3. So if you put in the number 10, you're going to square it. 10 squared is 100. Take away 3, you're going to get out the number 97. This time you're going to put in negative 1. So you're going to put in the number negative 1, you're going to square it, and remember again, negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is an ordinary 1, and then you're going to take away 3, 1 take away 3 is negative 2. Part C, this is the notation for inverse x. The safest thing to do is to do a machine or a flowchart. So going back to the original function, my function f is start with a value, square your value, and then take away 3. If you do that, then out the other end becomes x, x squared, take away 3. That was the original function f. Coming back the other way, 
I'm going to start with x. The opposite of take away 3 is add 3. The opposite of square is square root. So instead of writing square, I'm going to write square root. So out the other end, I will get x plus 3, and then I'm going to square root it. So it's the square root of x plus 3. More composite function questions. Question 6 is a slightly different one, so we'll go for question 6. And this time I'm not actually going to put the flowchart in. I'm just going to talk you through and explain what I'm writing down. So 6 part A says write down an expression for fg of x. Remember that means you start with x, you do the function g, then you do the function f. So I'm going to start with x. My function g is the function square, so I square x. Then I'm going to do the function f, and the function f tells me to multiply whatever I've got by 3 and add 1. So I'll multiply that by 3 and add 1. And that is my composite function, fg of x. Now, the other way around, this time we want the composite function g f of x. So I'm going to start with x. I'm going to do the function f, then the function g. So you start with x. f tells you to multiply by 3 and add 1. g is the function square, but you square everything. So all of that goes into a bracket because I have to square the whole thing. So my function g f of x is 3x plus 1, all squared. OK, some hard algebra now. It's now saying solve the equation f g of x equals g f of x. f g of x is 3x squared plus 1. And g f of x is 3x plus 1 all squared. So we have a complicated quadratic equation to solve here. I would expand the bracket first of all. So keep the left hand side like it is. On the right, we've got 3x plus 1 multiplied by 3x plus 1. So on the left, I still have this 3x squared plus 1. On the right, I have 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared, plus 3x, plus 3x, plus 1. So trying to simplify all this, collect the x squared terms together. So I'm going to take the 3x squared away from both sides, which gives me x squared there. So I have 1 is equal to 6x squared plus 6x plus 1. Take 1 away from both sides. So 0 is 6x squared plus 6x. There's a relatively straightforward quadratic equation to a solve here. I'm going to take out a common factor of 6x. So from here I'm left with x, and from here I'm left with 1. So I've either got that 6x must be equal to 0, which means that x will be 0, or I have x plus 1 must be 0, which means x is negative 1. So my two answers are x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. Another look at a different sort of function question. This time it's involved an in inverse. Remember, the inverse is undoing what you already did. So my function f means I'm going to put a value in, multiply by 4, and take away 1. And that then means that out, out of that machine, I get 4x take away 1. So for the inverse, I start at the end, go backwards, and do the opposite. The opposite of take away 1 is plus 1. The opposite of multiply by 4 is divide by 4. So out the end this time, I will get x plus 1 divided by 4. So f inverse x is equal to x plus 1 over 4. The next bit, we've got another function defined now, the function g. g is the function k times x squared. And we're told that fg of 2 is equal to 12. And we have to work out the value of k. So let's have a look at fg of 2. 
that means you're going to put 2 in first, then you're going to do the function g, then you're going to do the function f. So I start with 2, I do my function g, which means I'm going to square it and multiply by k. Then I'm going to do my function f, which means the whole of that is going to be multiplied by 4, and then I'm going to take away 1. Now, this bit looks complicated, but don't worry. All it means is you've got 4 multiplied by k, multiplied by 2 squared, which again is 4, then take away 1. 4 times 4 is 16, so that whole thing simplifies down to 16k, and I've still got the takeaway 1. Now, don't worry that we've still got the k there. We are told that when you put 2 in, the answer you should get out is 12. So I know the answer I did get out was 16k minus 1. So that has got to be equal to my value 12. Solve this for k. Add 1 to both sides. 16k is 13. Divide both sides by 16. k is 13 over 16. Okay guys, I hope you found the video super helpful. Please can we show some love and appreciation for Leslie who's spending her free time helping us all out and like the video and comment below if you'd like her to feature more on the channel. We'll both be... <laughs>